Hello, friends. How are we doing today? Good. Um, so, quickly, 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 um, I'm going to be giving you a bit of a review of Terminal Punk, Punk Philosophy by B. Vale at Research Pubs. Um, this has kind of been a long time coming, if you count a few weeks as a long time. Um, this... This is... And I... Okay. This is so changing for me. Like, um, altering. Like, life-altering, if you will. Because, and I'm really, really, really curious as to how someone who didn't grow up in the punk scene, how you would relate to this. Because I think it's universal. I'm pretty sure it's fucking universal. But um, it might be... It might hit me harder because of how I grew up as opposed to somebody who um, wasn't really into music growing up. I think you guys get what I'm saying. Because <sighs> I want to recommend this to everybody, like, in a ridiculous way. And if you remember the art spirit... I have um, been coming across a few books here and there that, to me, completely, like, change the way you think about stuff. So this has been very transformative for me, like the art spirit was. And um, one of the things that you come across as a booktuber, okay, is that you will hit a stretch of where a lot of the things you read are fucking garbage. And doing videos on books that I don't like doesn't... It doesn't fill me with joy. It, do it doesn't feel good to fucking come on here and go, oh, this book, it's a piece of fucking garbage. I hated it. Like, um, and I've been really disliking a lot of the random things I'm picking up. And whenever I read something I fucking hate or just, like, felt, eh, by... I immediately have to go and pick up something that I already know I like, that I just love the flow, love the pace, love the um, the dialogue, love the the punchiness, love the wit, to just get back into like going, God damn it, like that's a good fucking book. So when I hit a bunch of shit books, and I'm not one of those people, like there's a lot of booktubers on here who can fucking read book after book after book after book after book and not give two shits if a book is fucking garbage. They'll just fucking read it and read it and read it because that's what they do. And that's cool if that's what your fucking hobby is. But like to me, my fucking time is too goddamn valuable to me to waste it reading something that I'm fucking just not digging at all. So... When I come to things that, like, light me up, that just, like, it's almost as if, like, I'm standing on hot coals, okay? When that happens, I get so fucking excited, and the first thing, I'm like, oh my god, I have to make a fucking video about this right now, um, because I want all of you guys to fucking check this out. And so, um, uh, 
This is, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to go over this in chunks because there is so much in here that is like, like just this introduction page. Dude, I don't know what the ghetto birds are doing today, but they are fierce. They have been circling and circling lower and lower. Earlier today, the windows were rattling because one of these fucking helicopters was seriously like, I mean, I know it probably wasn't like this, but I felt like if I put my hand out the window, I could actually reach the helicopter. It was barely over the light poles, like the, not the light poles, because light poles are shorter, but the telephone poles. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Jesus Christ. All right, anyway, so what I'm getting at, just on this introduction page, I could do a whole video on it, and I'm probably going to do that right now. Um, but there's so many cool little um, bits, like, maybe I'll just do a bunch of it right now. I don't know. Um, I don't know if he'd get mad at me for doing this, but I feel like I need to give you some context here. So, punk the terminal philosophy. Philosophical fragments and quotes is what this page is. For years, we've been trying to write a book on what punk was. This was no top-down social change movement dictated by theory from some writer like Karl Marx. It was started from the bottom up by outsiders. Outsiders. We're not sure how the label punk got picked, but so be it. At least it's a four-letter word. Punk was early on identified with fuck the system. So rebellion seeks other rebellion. Rebellious words seek other rebellious words. If you want to stay a rebel for the long haul, and society does its best to make that impossible or to co-opt it, then seek out other rebels, rebel thinking, ideas, poetry, images, every little bit helps. Permanent black humor rebellion against the status quo as it changes is what punk is about. And as punk's precursors include Dada, surrealism, situationism, and the history of everything weird, there's plenty to learn. It's a lifetime quest for a searcher who's curious and driven. Yeah, we'll leave it there. So, um, that is one of the things that jumped out at me in that, um, and seeing it written out made me feel like a fucking idiot because a lot of this stuff is stuff that I know and stuff that I've known, but it's like a lot of this was even in that, um, the, the art spirit book where I would read something and go, Oh my fucking God, that's so fucking simple. Like, why is that such a hard thing? So what I'm getting at is this whole idea that the, um, rebellion seeks other rebellion, rebellious words seek other rebellious words. If you want to stay a rebel for the long haul, then seek out other rebels. Rebel thinking, ideas, poetry, images, every little bit helps. So, like I was saying, <clears throat> well, actually, first, if you've noticed, I look a little different. Some time has passed. I got a phone call. There was somebody at the door. Um, I had lunch, and I forgot that I was still recording. Like, I, the... I never hit stop. I walked off, completely forgot what I was doing, started doing other things. Um, and then I came back over here to type something and I'm like looking at myself and I'm like, holy crap, I never turned the fucking computer up. So anyway, um, 
So we're back here with this guy. Um, and what I was getting at um, was that I've been so much of a recluse the last... Uh, I'd say probably close to 10 years now. That's safe to say. I've been so much of a recluse that the idea of... Um, seeking out other rebellious people to do rebellious things. Um, that has been a complete fear in my head because so many times people let you down. And when I was making movies, people let me down. When I was in bands, people let me down. And I'm sure I let other people down. Um, but I got this whole thing in my head where it's like, you know what? Fuck it. I could do everything on my own. And um, even writing books is really hard to do on your own because... You need someone to do the cover if you can't do it. You need someone to edit the book if you can't do it. And honestly, you should have someone edit your book. Because there's so many times when I read something I've written, and I'll read it a bunch of times, especially like if I'm posting stuff on my website, I'll read it a bunch and go, nope, looks good, everything's fine. And then um, either someone will point it out to me or I'll just glance over at it or something and I'll go, wait a second, there's a word missing and I'll go back and read it and my mind knows what the next word should be kind of thing. And I'll look and it won't be there because I, um, I guess my brain processes what I'm going to say faster than I could type. So my hands have to catch up. I don't know if that's a real thing. That's what it feels like. So, um, and one of the biggest things about this, and I know I've talked about it on this channel before. When I went from being in bands, going on tour, um, playing shows in front of lots of people and the whole thing. And I went from that to doing like acoustic gigs by myself. It is so hard because after you play with a band, after your show, the guys in the band, there's a camaraderie. They're like, fuck, we did it. You know, good show, man. That was so fucking cool. Good job, man. Yeah. Woo. All right. Yeah. Eh. Whatever. But when I would do acoustic shows, I would go and play to sometimes a room of people who didn't even fucking know I was there. And afterwards, I had no one to talk to about how the show went. Afterwards, I would just be like, oh, okay. And I have a song about it. Um, it's called Alone. And in the song, it's like, basically like, getting up here by myself to basically slip my wrists and fucking vomit my soul out for you people and have you like, well, f just to do that for me, it takes so much out of me to be able to do that. And for the person sitting in the audience, it was just the next song out of a list of songs that is going to come up. So, for some reason, the there's, there, there is a disconnect when performing solo than performing with a band. Because, like, however many people you have in your band, you guys are all putting it on the line kind of thing. And, um, and let's just be fair. When I say you guys, I'm not like discounting the ladies. Okay. 
Um, I've been in bands with females and it's the exact same thing. So I'm not trying to say this is, this is only like a buddy thing with dudes. I'm not saying that at all. So anyway, long story short, um, and I've gone through little phases where um, seeking out rebellious people. Um, and it's funny, I'm using the word rebellious, but I don't even think that um, that's what I'm talking about. Because I feel like if anyone is willing to get in bed with me, basically, on any project that I do... Like, they're a rebel, you know? Like, it's not like I have been a curator of top-shelf art, okay? Like, if you're willing to put something in Weird Mask or um, do Poetic Anarchy or um, be in Creeperson, you know, the whole fucking thing, or do a movie with me, for fuck's sake... Um, you're putting yourself out there, you know? So I feel like anyone who's willing to go that far um, is rebellious. And when Weird Mask just started up, like, there was a crew. And that was a really good time. Like, especially, like, the first, like, 15 issues, okay? Okay. Um, and after that, it was still good, but there was like this bond between, um, me and maybe like five of the writers who would submit continuously, um, that it just felt like we were all in it together. And, um, I miss that. That was, that was a very strong, um, feeling that I really, really enjoyed. So, I don't know, maybe that's something um, that we get back. But at the same time, like, if you guys remember that movie, That Thing You Do, that Tom Hanks vehicle, um, the drummer, I can't remember his name in the movie, but he meets his drumming legend that he looked up to and he was all bummed out uh, because his band just broke up and he didn't know what he was going to do and the the blues drummer that he idolized um, was basically saying like dude bands come and go like you just play like that's just what you do and um, and some bands I've been in like a year was too long you know, or however long he said the Oneaters were a group. Um, and that that's true, because, like, a lot of things I've done with other people are a flash in the pan, and other times they last a really long time. Like, <clears throat> the, um, the movie career I had... Um, the way that was working out, I had a group of people that worked on every movie I did. And if they couldn't work on it, they wanted to, but our schedules didn't match, you know? So it was like, um, there was a very collective group. And that's why I've always liked like Ed Wood and John Waters, like, and for that matter, Roger Corman, like, or like Tim Burton, same way. Like you have like a core group of people you go to to make your art because that's how it goes or whatever. So um, I feel like for me, that's something that, that I'm missing. Um, and I think every way I do it, whether it's... Um, doing more anthologies, doing um, more films, uh, doing music. I think whatever it is, um, I need to kind of focus on that because it's that whole, I think it's biblical. 
iron sharpens iron. You know what I'm saying? So, um, if you don't have any iron to sharpen your iron with, your iron will eventually dull. So, shit. Um, thanks, Bible. You made a point. And um, hopefully that's the point that was put into the introduction of the book that I'm talking about today. Um, Terminal Punk by V Vale. And I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to put a link. I don't know if there's any more of these at his store at researchpubs.com. Um, but if there is, um, and if there's not, this this is the sixth edition of this. So maybe he'll print some more out. Um but I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it's inexpensive. Pick it up, and that way um, I could go through. When I go through it, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. And if there are any of you out there who are uh, the rebellious people that need to um, come together to try to do something or anything... Let me know in the comments down below or send me an email to IHateMattWall at gmail.com and um, let's talk about stuff and put stuff together, you know? Like you can't fucking, um, you can't burn the world down without a match. So um, let's get on that. But yeah, so there will be a link to his store in the description below as well. And um, pick it up. It, it's it was seriously like I couldn't put it down, and I was like making notes, and then I had a pen, and I'm like drawing in here, trying to like go. Oh, okay, I got to talk about this. Got to talk about that. Um, but like a lot of it is more not just I have to talk about it, but it's like I need to fucking remind myself this every fucking day. So if you have that, oh, and again, if you do get this and you didn't grow up with this and in the next video I do, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that because again, I'm a SoCal boy and um, B Vale uh, is up in the Bay Area, San Fran. So um, th there's some, there's some shit in here and um, I actually would love to talk to him about that. Let me do some plugs. Go over to Patreon sign up um you get um free stuff exclusive looks all this other crap um i put up some uh digital downloads up there for you guys um for the members red book um it's over at my etsy shop links down below um the other new chat book um i could write racetrack poems too fucker i it was here and now it's not. Um, go over to my um, eBay store and you could get um, a bunch of paperbacks. Um, I don't know if I've done the video for that yet. I have to edit that still, I guess. Okay, so anyway, whatevs. Um, and um, the new Hank Bradshaw book, Dead Dame Curse, comes out on June 7th. And on release day, maybe I'll do it the day before so the like the low price will still work, but I'm going to try to do a live stream. My internet's really shit. So I don't know if that's going to work, but I'll try to do a live stream, um, like release party kind of thing. We'll see how that goes. Okay. So until next time, everybody. Mwah.